Hello students. In the NEET exam, diagram related questions are many from biology part. So in today's video, we are going to discuss some of the important diagrams from biology and not only diagrams, we are going to discuss what type of questions are going to arise from the diagram related questions. Now you have male reproductive structure diagram. Now here the questions are going to be asked the passage of sperm. No doubt the sperms are going to produce in the seminiferous tubules of the testes. So after its production, what is the pathway of the sperm that we need to remember? So remember children, from the seminiferous tubules, the sperms enters to rete testes, then vasa efferentia, then to the epididymis, then from the epididymis to the vas deferens. So this is the pathway. And one more point we need to remember that sperms attained motility after reaching to epididymis. After reaching to epididymis, they attains the maturity. Then we also remember that the testes are covered by a loose tissue, a loose layer called scrotum. And the main function of the scrotum is to maintain lesser temperature than the body temperature 2 to 2.5 degree lesser temperature that helps in sperm production that helps in spermatogenesis now you can also find here some of the accessory uh, uh, the, uh, accessory uh, glands like uh, bulbourethral gland prostate gland and seminal vesicles they helps in the production of semen let us move to the next diagram here you can find the transfer section of young anther. So here children please remember the inner layer called tapetum that helps in nourishing the developing pollen grains. Tapetum, tapetum nourishes the developing pollen grains. Then also remember in the anther inside the microsporangium inside the microsporangium you can find a sporogenous tissue. You can find sporogenous tissue. And this sporogenous tissue undergo meiosis, reductional division, to produce, to produce microspore tetrad. Microspore tetrad that finally converts to converts into pollen grains that you have to remember here. Now, you can find here the megasporogenesis representation, megasporogenesis. And here these diagrams where you can find 2, 4 and 8 cells they, that is showing free nuclear division. It shows free nuclear division. And typical angiosperm embryo sac, typical angiosperm embryo sac consists of 8 nucleus, 8 nucleated and 7 celled, 8 nucleated and 7 celled. In addition to that, you have to remember that at the micropylar region, at the micropylar region, 3 cells are there, 1 egg and 2 synergids. In the synergids, you can find filiform apparatus in the synergids. They are going to guide the pollen tube to carry the male gamete so that it can fuse with the egg to produce zygote and one more male gamete with the polar uh, central cell to produce triploid endosperm, primary endosperm nucleus. So at the chalazal end, we can find three more cells called antipodals. Now next we have anatropous ovule or megasporangium. It is megasporangium. So here we have to remember that the ovule attached to the placenta by a stack called funicle, by a stack called funicle and funicle fused here at a region called hilum, at a region called hilum and based on the number of uh, integuments in the megasporangium in the ovule, if it is one integuments, it is unitegmic, if it is two, it is bitegmic that you have to remember here. Now, this is the structure of LS of embryo of grass or monocot. Here the cotyledon, cotyledon is called as scutilum. The scutilum is the cotyledon. Scutilum is the cotyl cotyledon. At the lower end you can find a radical 
एंड रूट कैप एट द लोअर एंड यू कैन फाइंड रेडिकल एंड रूट कैप इन ए अनडिफ्रेंशिएटेड रिमेंबर अनडिफ्रेंशिएटेड सीट कॉल्ड कोलियोराइजा अनडिफ्रेंशिएटेड सीट कॉल्ड कोलियोराइजा रिमेंबर दैट नाउ नेक्स्ट यू कैन फाइंड द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ मेज सीड here you have to remember again there is a word scutellum came that is cotyledon you can find radical and coleoriza and plumule is in the coleoptile now endosperm endosperm around the endosperm you can find a luron layer around the endosperm you can find a luron layer that you have to remember here now next very very important diagram is the sectional view of seminiferous tubule so please children here what you need to remember that the spermat this is first of all this is a central part this is a central part and this is peripheral part that you remember peripheral and central region then here spermatozoa is haploid spermatid is haploid secondary spermatocyte is haploid primary spermatocyte is diploid spermatogonium is also diploid that you have to remember and there is a sertoli cell that nourishes the developing sperm on this sertoli cell fsh follicle stimulating hormone is going to act now the conversion of spermatid into spermatozoa is considered as spermiogenesis remember conversion of inactive inmotile spermatid into active motile spermatozoa is considered as spermiogenesis so remember here which are which cells are haploid and which cells are diploid now this is a structure of mammary gland now here what you need to remember here that there are 15 to 20 15 to 20 around 15 to 20 mammary lobes you can find 15 to 20 mammary lobes you can find and uh, in the memory lobe you can find the clusters of cells called alveoli clusters of cells called alveoli that secretes milk the clusters of cells called alveoli that secretes milk <coughs> now a very very important diagram the human sperm so here you have to remember that at the head region you can find a haploid nucleus haploid nucleus and above that you can find acrosome this part is considered as acrosome in the acrosome you can find many enzymes like hyaluronidase hyaluronidase enzyme in the acrosome in addition to that it has acrosin acrosin and it is also having corona penetrating enzyme corona penetrating enzyme these enzymes helps in fertilization of the egg these enzymes are present in the acrosome part of the sperm then in the middle region in the middle region you can find mitochondria how many mitochondria you have to remember around 25 to 30 mitochondria you can find in the middle piece and these mitochondria arranged spirally they arranged in the middle piece spirally spiral arrangement that's why it is considered as neberkan it is considered as neberkan the spiral arrangement of mitochondria in the middle piece it is considered as neberkan and remember in the in the human sperm tail is the tail is the largest part and it shows vib lash movement it shows remember vib lash movement it shows vib lash movement okay and also remember sperms at attained motility in the epididymis after reaching to epididymis the sperms attains the motility that you have to remember now in the structure of ovary you have to remember that under the influence of uh, gonadotrophin uh, gonadotrophins like follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone in the ovary you can find the development of follicles primary follicles to secondary follicles secondary follicles to tertiary follicles tertiary follicles to mature graafian follicle so this graafian follicle ruptures to release ovum egg at the 14th day of menstruation cycle there is a rupturing of uh, uh, graafian follicles to release ovum and it is because of lh surge luteinizing hormone is at the peak level that responsible for the rupturing of graafian follicle to release the 
ovum now after rupturing the ruptured graafian follicle converts to corpus luteum yellow color corpus luteum that secretes a hormone called progesterone hormone pregnancy hormone if there is no fertilization then corpus luteum yellow color corpus luteum converts to white color corpus albicans and stop producing progesterone that responsible for the breakdown of again endometrium to starts a new menstrual cycle these points you have to remember here now in the uh, structure of graafian follicle you have to remember that it has a layers like tunica externa and tunica interna and it has a antrum filled follicular fluid there is a basement membrane then around the primary oocyte around the primary oocyte you can find zona pellucida and corona radiata corona radiata and you can also find granulosa cells at the base of the primary oocyte these parts you have to remember now in the structure of ovum here very very important the corona radiata the cells of the corona radiata the cells of the corona radiata are cellular cellular that's why corona cells of corona radiata they are cellular and about zona pellucida it is a glycoprotein zona pellucida is a glycoprotein layer it's a glycoprotein layer remember glycoprotein layer okay and that glycoprotein layer produced by secondary oocyte it is produced by the uh, the zona pellucida is produced by secondary oocyte secondary oocyte and remember zona pellucida is a a cellular it is a a cellular layer it's a a cellular and it prevents the main function of the zona pellucida is it prevents it prevents polyspermy remember it prevents uh, polyspermy it prevents polyspermy and most important function of zona pellucida is it is responsible for species specific fertilization what species specific fertilization human sperm only human sperm can fertilized this human ovum that is ensured by zona pellucida species spe specific fertilization now here in this diagram you can find vasectomy where vas difference is cut and tied and here you can find tubectomy where fallopian tube or uh, oviducts are cut and tied these are the permanent sterilization methods vasectomy in male and tubectomy in a female now here you can find the structure of transcription unit transcription unit so what you need to remember here is in at the promoter region you can find the attachment of enzyme called rna polymerase rna polymerase and one factor called sigma factor sigma factor that helps in uh, the transcription of dna to rna rna polymerase and sigma factors attached to the promoter region that you have to remember and you should also remember that uh, the mrna mrna is complementary to the template strand mrna is complementary to the template strand and at the terminator side due to the binding of rho factor the transcription is going to be terminated and remember student mrna whatever the mrna we can get after transcription that mrna exactly similar to coding strand exactly mrna exactly similar to coding strand except except wherever there is a thymine in the coding strand in mrna you can find uracil that you have to remember very very important now you can find here the transcription in eukaryotes because in uh, in the trans in the eukaryotes in the mrna you can find exons as well as introns exons are the coding sequences whereas introns are the non coding sequences so uh, the introns are removed by a process called splicing by a process called splicing with the help of enzyme a uh, spliceosome spliceosome enzyme that helps in the splicing removal of introns and joining of exon and at the phi dash end there is an addition of uh, uh, there is a capping there is a capping because of the addition of five methyl at uh, the phi dash end addition of methyl guanosine triphosphate because of the addition of methyl guanosine triphosphate that is considered as capping at the phi dash end 
and to protect the mrna from the enzyme rnas naturally rnas enzyme present in our body in our cells to protect our uh, mrna from rnas enzyme at the three dash end there is an addition of poly a tile so these are the post transcriptional modification what are those capping splicing and tailing these are the post transcriptional modification you can find in eukaryotes that you have to remember now here you can find the uh, uh, structure of nucleosome where you can find a histone molecule histone octamer histone octamer around which the dna is wrapped and between one histone molecule and another histone molecule uh, there is one h1 histone h1 histone that connects the two the that connects two nucleosomes together so here you can find stanley miller experiment stanley miller experiment so here what you have to remember is the ratio ratio of methane ammonia methane ammonia and hydrogen in the ratio of 2 is to 1 is to 2 that has been taken in the uh, uh, discharge tube in the discharge tube you can also find electrodes here remember electrodes are going to maintain around 7000 five uh, seventy five thousand volts of electricity seventy five thousand volts of electricity and the boiling water maintains around eight hundred degree celsius temperature these points you have to remember and the gas is going to be removed by the vacuum with the help of that vacuum and the organic molecules are collected in the trap now homologous organs you know homologous organs means the organs has a similar origin and structure but they are going to perform different function here you can find the bones of four limbs of man cheetah whale and bat homologous organ now analogous organs they are performing the same function but they have different structure and origin you can find the wings of butterfly and the wings of bird so in the wings of the birds you can find the bones similar to humans whereas the wings of the butterfly is just the integument now this is the structure of a plasmid vector pbr322 pbr322 you can find here um, uh, antibiotic resistance genes like ampicillin resistance gene and tetracycline resistance gene in addition to that you can find the origin of replication and different restriction sites especially eco r1 BAM H1, PU, PVU1 and PST1. These are all the restriction sites that are going to be uh, helpful to introduce the foreign gene into the, especially to the antibiotic resistance gene. Here you can find the representation of uh, two bioreactors, uh, two bioreactors, the simple one and the sparked one. The simple stirred bioreactor is the old, old one old one whereas in sparked bioreactor there is a sparger there is a use of spargers that helps to produce oxygen bubbles which is responsible for the more growth of the microorganisms which are going to culture in these bioreactors here you can find the structure of agarose gel electrophoresis agarose gel electrophoresis these are all the uh, dna fragments which are larger and these dna fragments are smaller and dna fragments are moving towards a positive electrode called anode because whatever the dna loaded here these dna fragments are migrating towards anode because they are negatively charged dna is negative charge that's why they migrate towards anode so here you can find uh, the separation of dna as a precipitate and that is that process of uh, separating the dna in the form of precipitate is called as spooling by uh, spooling by adding chilled ethanol by adding chilled ethanol we can able to precipitate the dna that can be removed by spooling and in the biodiversity you can find here the distribution of invertebrates vertebrates and uh, plants this is very very important that you need to remember so this is the graph shows the species area relationship species area relationship and here you can find the different uh, biomes desert grassland tropical temperate forest coniferous forest and arctic and uh, alpine tundra so here is a representation of nostoc a blue green algae what you need to remember here is heterosis heterocyst that helps in nitrogen fixation it helps in uh, nitrogen fixation and here you can find the two uh, RNAs, one is uh, tobacco mausiac virus where DNA is a genetic material and this is the protein capsule called uh, capsid and this is bacteriophage, bacteriophage here DNA is a genetic material, it has a head region 
एंड द कैप्सिड इट हैज प्रोटीन कैप्सिड कॉलर एंड टेन now very very important in marchantia you can have female thallus and male thallus male thallus what is differentiated is this part in case of female it is archegonophore remember the structure in case of male it is anthridiospore you have to distinguish with the help of the structure of archegonophore and anthridiophore and that differentiate female and male thallus in marchantia here you can find Uh, the classification of animals based on the coelom this is a representation of a coelomates without coelom you can find there is no coelom that you can find in platyhelminthes and in pseudo coelomates here uh, the body cavity is no, is not lined by mesoderm it is not lined by mesoderm mesoderm is present but it is having a scattered pouches you can find this in as uh, ascalminthes and this is a coelomates and uh, it has a true body body cavity this coelomate you can find in anelida arthropoda and uh, in chordates and here is a picture of uh, round worm round worm ascaris you can find a smaller male which is coiled here you can find the coiling that is male and larger one is female larger one is uh, female here you can find racemos and cymos the um, mode of uh, inflorescence mode of arrangement of flower if you find younger flower at the tip and uh, older flower at the base it is racemos and if you find uh, older flower at the tip and younger flower at the base it is considered as cymos and here you can find the position of floral plants on the thalamus uh, it is uh, considered as uh, hypogynous hypogynous sorry uh, hypogynous and uh, b and c they are Uh, the perigynous and uh, epigynous based on the position of the ovary we have classified the flowers into hypogynous hypogynous perigynous and epigynous now here you can see the structure of female reproductive uh, organ what you need to remember here is the uh, in the fallopian tube in the fallopian tube the part which is near to the ovary is in fundibulum the part which is near to the ovary is uh, in funnel shaped infundibulum and it has many finger like projections called fimbriae and this fimbriae collects the egg produced in the ovary and the wider part after infundi infundibulum the wider part is ampulla followed by isthmus and you need to remember that the fertilization occurs in ampullary isthmic junction in the ampullary isthmic junction fertilization is going to occur whereas in the womb in the uterus you can find three layers perimetrium myometrium and endometrium what you have to remember here is endometrium the inner layer endometrium it undergo cyclic changes it undergo cyclic changes every month and involving in menstrual cycle whereas the middle layer called myometrium it is undergo uh, contraction at the time of delivery during parturition it is responsible for contraction and cervix cervical canal and vagina they are responsible as a birth canal during delivery and remember in these all these uh, labelings vagina is the one without any kind of gland it is devoid of any kind of gland vagina is devoid of a gland